Good morning, guys. Um, sorry I can't be here with you today. Um, so I'm going to make you this little recording so you know what you need to do and what you need to accomplish today. So starting with a little bit of business, um, keep in mind grades were updated over the weekend. So your slab canister grades are in there. Any late work that was turned in um, has also been posted. So make sure you're checking your home access center and looking at those grades so you know what you're missing and what you need to do for makeup work. Um, as far as today, we're going to start the teapot. So this week, just a quick reminder tomorrow, again, uh, parent-teacher conference is tomorrow. We are meeting from 1015 to 1045, and we're all remote tomorrow, so it's a little bit of a different schedule. So we're going to be um, doing the demonstration of the teapot tomorrow. Today, what we're going to do is introduce the teapot, and you have slide three due in your 4.1 PPP. Okay, so moving over here to Schoology so that you can see where that all is, you will notice that Unit three has now been archived. So if you have any work that you still need to post for your um, slab canister, you're gonna need to go into the archive to unit three to post anything and then make sure that you, anything that you put in there, whether it be a self-assessment worksheet, a flip grid, or pictures for the project, you need to make sure that you put them in the late work form at this point because those grades have been added. So today we're gonna get started on the teapot for unit four. When you go in there, you're going to see a couple things. First, and I'm going to go through this today, um, the introduction for the teapot. So I'm going to kind of show that to you in just a minute. And then 4.1, this is our PPP um, for this particular project. So this is where you guys are going to be adding your slides today. So I'll get back to this in just a minute. But right now, let's start with introduction to teapots so that you can see what it is this project is about. So let me make my screen a little bit bigger here. So you guys are going to make a teapot full with spout, lid, knob, handle, all those things in the body of the teapot, of course. So I'm going to show you that how to do that tomorrow for today. We're just going to kind of talk about things that inspire you. So one of the things is, is that you know, we're working with air dry clay that's not going to be fired. So you're not going to be able to use these teapots. They're more decorative. Um, but the reason that it's really important for us to make a teapot is it's sort of a rite of passage um, for all potters to learn to make teapots because they're super complex forms. You have all those components. You have to make them work all together and you have to know how to make them not only look good, but be able to hold water and pour. So we are going to learn all of those things. We're just not going to put actual water in it or pour from them. So the design is going to be up to you and this is what you're going to be thinking about today. It's, there's a lot of different ways to do this. They can be very simple and still elegant, which you are fine to do, but they can also be really complex. So if you've been kind of itching to get a little more sculptural with your work or try something a little bit more creative, you do not have to follow. There's a couple things you need to follow for requirements, but you do not have to follow the exact teapot that I am going to demonstrate. You can add on to it. So this one has the octopus added on to it. Um, on the top, you can kind of see here, this is where the water would be held. This is the spout. This is the opening it looks like here. And they've used some sort of coil sculpture to wrap around the teapot and make it a little bit more interesting. And this one is a similar idea where they turned the, the neck of the bird into the spout. And then they have the wings and the tail all functioning as parts of either decoration or handle. So Teapots are just a creative form that all artists like to make. It's sort of something that all potters make as a way to express themselves creatively because it's such a challenge because you have all these components, yet you have to try to make it unique, different, or unusual in some way. So sometimes when you're looking at teapots, you won't even know they're teapots. They just look like sculptures. So sometimes you have to look at them more carefully to try to figure out how they work. So like I was looking at this one. So this must be the teapot, and somehow there must be a hole through this cannon part here. So this would be the spout that would hold the water, or I'm sorry, pour the water. This would all hold the water. He made an ear for a handle. And then this is like a nuclear, um, like an atom bomb cloud for the knob and the lid is here. And then all these other little components here are the teacups that go with, um, with the teapot. So that one is one of those ones you look at, you think it's just a sculpture, but it's actually a functioning tea set. Um, looking at this one, I looked at this for a long time. I think I can find a few parts. 
but not everything even. So this must be some sort of a lid and this must be some sort of a spout. I think this was an example of one that is definitely more sculptural than functional, um, but the artist was just having fun with making all those components um, into a teapot sculpture. So you can get as creative as you want to with this. So these are the requirements that you must follow before you add on all of your creativity. First of all, we're gonna be making this using the pinch method, which I'm going to show you in the demonstration tomorrow. It does mean as you're looking today, because I don't want you to be disappointed, that we will be working from a basic shape that is a sphere. So you're gonna find teapots like this that are based off of squares or organic shapes. And you will have to modify yours so that it starts with a spherical shape. So you can take, like, let's say, for example, you were looking at this one, it has a square component. You could pinch a part of it, like if this was based off a sphere and then cut into and added onto, you could do that. But the basic requirement for this is that you must start using this pinch method, okay? It needs to have all the components of a teapot, which means it has to have the body, the lid, the knob, the spout, the foot and I'm going to show you how to do something called a pulled handle. You don't know what that is yet, but you will get to that tomorrow. Okay, so you must have a pulled handle because it is a skill I would like you to build. Um, you can be as creative or as sculptural as you like as long as you fulfill these requirements or you can be as simplistic and um, refined as you want. Up to you how you want to how you want to go about that. The main fun, uh, focus on is going to be on form and function. Form meaning making a really nice, pleasing design and also thinking about the elements about how a teapot would function. Like how are you going to have, for example, a handle that is just the right size that when you pick it up, you could pour from. So we're going to talk about things like that as well. Okay, so now let's get to your part and what you're going to be doing today. Today, you are going to need to go into Schoology and you are going to need to open your 4.1 pinch teapot plan. When you open this, you are gonna find this. And this is gonna be where you're putting your planning. So when we get into here, and close this, you are gonna do, you should be familiar with this because we've done it with the other two projects. So it's the same thing. We're gonna start, you're gonna add your name to the first slide. And then today's kind of like a field trip. We're gonna go on a gallery tour. All we're gonna to do today is look at teapots. So here's the thing. I have students all the time say, oh, I already know what I'm gonna make. I don't need to look. And then you really, really miss out. So part of this journey or part of learning is really taking the time to look at what other people do. So I am carving a huge amount of time for you today to just look, okay? So today you will look through as many images as you can. You're gonna pick the pieces that interest you. Don't worry yet about how they are made. We're gonna cover that tomorrow. Right now you're just gonna look at them for inspiration. Um, so this is your virtual gallery tour. It's a field trip. I have included links down here that I want you to use. I do not want you to use Google. It's not allowed, it's banned. You cannot use Google. You cannot do a Google search, you have to use these. But from here, I'm gonna kind of show you what they are and what they do. You're gonna find three teapots that you like from these websites, and you are gonna find three images, minimum. You can do more than three if you want to, but you a minimum of three images, um, and you're gonna put them into the next slide. So again, you should be familiar with this. Let me show you what the next slide looks like. I should actually make this bigger so you guys can see it better. Okay, so you can kind of click on all of these. You're going to be putting, this is familiar, we've done these with the other two projects as well, at least one, two, three pictures of different teapots in here. And in the text box below, you're going to tell me why you chose those three pieces. So I'm going to show you my teacher sample so that you can see what this kind of looks like. Um, the only thing to keep in mind is that your final method is the pinch method, which means it's based off of a sphere. It doesn't mean you have to have pictures of spherical teapots, but you may have to, like in the example I just gave, if you put one that's not a sphere, you may have to say, I really like the way this one you know, looks. I'm gonna create a half a sphere with the pinch method and then I'm gonna sculpt onto it with slabs. You may have to explain something like that in the text box below if you put something in there, how you're gonna alter it to work for this assignment. Okay, so let me show you my teacher sample. 
and then I'm going to show you how the websites work and I'm going to get you rolling. So these are just, I just made this real quick to kind of show you what I'm expecting from you today. By the end of the period today, this slide needs to be done. And I just put three pictures in here that inspired me. Now I want to point out that this first one is not even a teapot. So if you find something that's not a teapot, but you just like it, I could easily turn this into a teapot. I just have to ha add a spout and a handle and I've got a teapot, right? So maybe I just think this knob is really cool and I didn't want to lose this picture. That is fine. Whatever inspires you about the pictures you find, find today, you just need to explain it before or below. So this one is what I said. I said, this isn't a teapot, but I like the shape and um, shape and the handle with the hole through the middle. So I probably should have called that a knob actually. So I liked this knob on the top. So I want to use that somehow. The next one I said, I love the curvy spout on this teapot. So this one is not even about the shape or the pandas or the glaze or anything. It is all just about this spout. I think that's cool. I want a curvy spout on mine. And then I go to the next one and I just say, I liked the elevated foot on this teapot. So I don't, I'm not, paying any attention to these things. The reason I picked this is because I like the way they added this foot here. And that's the reason I was inspired by that. So whatever your reasoning is for picking it and adding it, you need to put it below. And eventually you're gonna tell me how you're gonna incorporate these ideas into your plan. So let's go back to yours. And I wanna show you what these websites are and kind of what you're gonna find when you get to them. So Farron Gallery is just a gallery that we look at a lot. And I have led you straight to their teapot collection with this one. Leslie Farron is the owner of this gallery. She's written a book about teapots in particular. So I took you right to the page that you need to get to on this. What you can do is you can click on the picture and then you can just kind of scroll through and you know, take a little slide tour through different kinds of teapots. They're gonna give you some up close details and things like that. So if you find something in here that you're like, hey, that's really cool, I, I'm gonna try that. Remember, it's based off a sphere. This is a half a sphere, so maybe I could use this. And then I just wouldn't, I would cut the bottom part out and then I would just have that half of, half of that ball to work with. So that's what the Farron Gallery is. It's gonna kind of take you to that. You are welcome to search around the Farron Gallery at different things. There's lots going on there. And like I said, you don't only have to look at teapots for inspiration, but I just brought you to that page as a starter. Ceramic Arts Daily is a website and I brought you to a, a more specific place there too. Um, it is a website. They are going to ask you to join their stuff and you're going to have to close their pop-up windows and things like that as you join. Um, but I'll just kind of show you around here. Um, I brought you again to this teapot. So you're going to find different things in here. You're going to find articles. You're going to find videos. You're going to find a bunch of different things. So like, let's just say I'm like, oh, this one looks cool. I'm going to click on this and you might be taken to an article and you can just look through. Or maybe this one looked cool to me because I think, oh, see, they're, they're starting to ask me stuff. But I'm like, oh, look at all those different shapes. Look, I could even start. I'm really inspired. I like this shape. I could start with the pinch teapot sphere, and then I could, like, alter it a little bit to squish the sphere and make it look like this. This one would be something we're not going to do with the pinch method. But anything with that sort of rounded beginning, spherical beginning, even if it's a half, we can use. So maybe I can find something in here that is interesting to me. That's the second one, Ceramic Arts Daily. The gallery guide is also a part of Ceramic Arts Daily, but here's what this one does. So this is a, a compilation of all of the ceramic art galleries in not only the country, but the, at the bottom they have even international um, art galleries. So this was the 2018 gallery guide. And as you scroll through, you're just going to see them listed by state. So alphabetically, you're starting with Arizona, Alabama, and all those, and we're going to go all the way down. This is a huge resource, lots and lots of stuff, but you're going to look at it and you're going to be like, where's all the pictures? Well, this is what you got to do. So let's say I land on Kentucky and I want to go and look at this gallery here. So a couple of things to look at. They have a couple of different things in that are links. If you see this little at symbol, that means it's a an email. So you don't want to click on that because you're going to be emailing somebody. You don't want that. You want the website. So you're going to be looking for the link that is the website. So this in this case, it's www Kentucky Artists Artisan Center, right? So I would click on that. And then that's going to take me to that gallery. And I'll be able to look at every single piece that they have in that gallery. 
one warning about this is that these galleries don't only hold um, ceramic work. You might find paintings and things like that. So you will just kind of have to explore through this. So I would probably go on something like shop so that I could see what they had um, in their gallery spaces, right? So there you go. That's what those are going to do. Some of these, you know, the galleries are going to have more than others. So this is just kind of like as you go through. And if you want to get to the international ones, they're usually listed at the bottom. So you can look at galleries in like Italy and Ireland and all these fun things as well. So that is your gallery guide. Etsy is a website that features um, artists rather than just mass production things. So I actually already did the search on teapots in here. So it should lead you to um, homemade teapots made by artists that you can kind of look at and explore some different things. Um, Red Lodge Clay Center is just a good one. It has, it is a gallery. It may even be featured in the gallery guide, um, but it has a lot of really well-known artists. So I thought that was worth adding. And then the last one, so if you click on this one, I'll just show you. Again, you're going to find things that are not teapots here, but really, really cool and well-made things that you can look at and think about how you could use that for a teapot. So you can, these are by artist. So you can click on, let's say, well, Jennifer Allen, she has a teapot posted, so I'll look at hers, but it's going to show all of Jennifer Allen's work. You can even buy some. You can see how much money you can make. So maybe you could sell this after for 160 bucks. Never know. And then the last one is just the Pinterest page. Um, this is a Pinterest page that I found of all art galleries. So when you click on here, this is kind of like the gallery guide, but in picture form. Somebody, I didn't put this board together. Somebody else put this board together. Um, but it has a lot of really well-known galleries. So if you don't want to go to the gallery guide and you'd rather go by pictures, it's essentially the same thing. It's going to just take you, when you click on the piece, to that ceramic community or that ceramic gallery, right? So this one's in Iowa. Right, so you can, there's a lot of things in here if you want to just look through. Ooh, this one looks cool. Maybe I'll click on this one. Okay. So kind of like the gallery by guide, like I said, but in picture format. So you're going to look through any of those resources, not Google, and you're going to find a minimum, as I said, of three images that inspire you. Paste them in here. If you are so inspired by multiple things or three is not enough, feel free to add another slide and add more. I just, if you just put a picture in here though, I'm not going to know what interests you. So you're going to need to add just a sentence or two explaining what about that picture that I need? And that's it. Just slide three today. And then tomorrow we're going to watch the demonstration of how to make the teapot. Um, one other thing I should add, add before I log off here is that I will be available for office hours today. So if you're confused or have questions, feel free to reach out to me during office hours. See you tomorrow.